Ladies and gentlemen, God bless each and every one of y'all. Why you think two fighters who has had the same trainer never to fight against each other? You know why? Because they know each other's strength, weaknesses, habits, good habits, bad habits, training regimen, and things of that nature, uh, um, lifestyle. And this is the reason why Subriel Matias is more dangerous than you think when it comes to Subriel Matias versus Devin the Dream Haney. Now, you see, what you're seeing right now is Devin Haney in the blue, the U.S. saying, you see Panda. Panda is the trainer of Subriel Matias. So think about it. What do you think Panda is molding Subriel Matias or will be molding Subriel Matias um, in a potential fight with Devin the Dream Haney? Of course, Devin Haney, if he is victorious versus Ryan Garcia, April 20th, the Barclay Center, New York City, my city. And a lot of people is predicting Devin Haney to, 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 to beat Ryan Garcia. I'm actually, I'm actually predicting that Devin Haney is going to beat Devin. Um, um, Devin Haney is going to beat Ryan Garcia as well. Um, but I think it's going to be a, a hell of a fight. I think it's going to be a 50-50 fight. But I think that Devin Haney got great momentum going to the fight. He's getting stronger and his experience. Everything just going with, 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 with Devin Haney. He's like a, a well-oiled machine right now. Um, but... We all know that if he if he beats Ryan Garcia, there's a potential fight, a unification bout in the 140 pound division with Subriel Matias, the IBF Junior Waterweight Champion, versus Devin Haney. Now both these guys um, have done business. Well, Subriel Matias has, is already signed to Matchroom Boxing, Eddie Hearn, and Eddie and, and and Devin Haney has a great relationship, a great partnership, businessship with um, Matchroom Boxing, Eddie, uh, Eddie Hearn, the Zone. So I think that's a fight that could be easily made. But would it be made? Would it be made? Because just like I said in the beginning, normally fighters don't fight each other if they have had similar trainers. And Subriel Matias, punching power, is, is, is just not, that's not going to be the only thing that's dangerous. His effective aggression, is not, is not, that's not going to be the only thing that's dangerous. But the most dangerous is the man in the corner, and that, and that man is Panda. Let's not neglect, folks, that the corner is, 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 is not important. You can't neglect that. The corner is important. This is why we always give props to trainers like Bo Mac, uh, uh, um, Shino, uh, um, um, uh, um, Naoyeno, who is father, his trainer. Um, this, this is why these guys get trainer of the year awards and things of that nature. Hey, we're talking about Ryan Garcia and Derek James. Uh, if Derek James is handling this, this circus around the Mahaney versus Ryan Garcia. Right, because the trainer is actually important. That's why we give. Why we always say that? Hey, yo, if Customado never died, yo, uh, uh, Mike Tyson would have never lost. Emmanuel Store, Angelo Don Dundee. So let's not neglect that trainers is ha highly important um, in preparing a fighter to go out there and fight his opponent. I'm gonna give you another example on why corner is happy. Remember Joey Gamachi. Joey Gamachi used to help out and train Vasily Lomachenko. Guess who Tiafimo Lopez and his father hired to prepare for the Richard Comey and Vasily Lomachenko? Joey Gamachi. How did they do? Man, it looked like Tiafimo Lopez was in a whole nother level, right? Whole nother level, especially the first, the first half of the fight. You think it was a coincidence? It was all about preparation. See, because Joey Gamachi knows exactly the habits, the strength and weaknesses of, of Vasily Lomachenko, right? Now, Banda knows the strength and weaknesses of Devin Haney. Now, okay, if you, look at, if you look at this video right now, yes, this is Devin Haney when he's young. This is Devin Haney when he's young. But if y'all know boxing like I know boxing, and I'm not trying to be ha having an ego trip, but understand this. A lot of what you see in the amateurs is what you really see in the professional level. In the professional level, they're sharpening their tools. The amateurs, this is where they build and, and, and their skills got molded and their skills got built. If you see Devin Haney right now, he established the jab. He has the movement. He is the same Devin Haney you see right here. It's the same Devin Haney you see today. I'm not going to say, of course, he, of course he got better. Of course he got stronger. This, he became a man. You know what I'm saying? And yes, his power is going to be, he's going to be, his jab is going to be more snappy. It's going to take more, it's, it's going to be more effective in terms of strength and, and all of that stuff. Um, and of course he had wonderful trainers like Flo May with a senior to help him out. Um, that, and Ben Davidson helped, helping him out and helping Bill Haney, who's done a hell of a job with them in the dream Haney in and out the ring. Um, but Banda also 
is part of molding the dream Haney. And when somebody is in in, in it no is is there while they molding you. This 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 is not the this is different between just you getting hired as a trainer um well into your professional level. But when they're molding you, they have a significant, they're highly educated about who you are as a fighter. You know, and they could see if you're grown because they could see you when you was a child. Okay, okay, he does the same couple of things. It's almost like what Devin Haney said about Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia fight like the amateurs. Almost everybody fights like in the amateur. I'm gonna say like this: if you would have saw Javante Tan Davis in the amateurs, you would have you you would have known. And I used to say this all the time: Yo, Javante Tan Davis got footwork, footwork, footwork. You know what? The way that he fought, um, um, Pitbull Cruz. That was the, actually the way that he was fighting during the, in, in the amateurs. He used to move. He used to fight on the outside and things of that nature. You could see that. You see that. They don't really, it's really they don't change. They don't really change. In the professional level, they just become stronger. But they're still using their amateur skill set. You feel me? They're not amateurs, but they're using already what they, what, what, what they, everything that was taught. I'm going to give you another example. Flo Mayweather. You, do you think that Flo Mayweather was fighting... Fighting, fighting Roger Mayweather style? Go look at Flo Mayweather and his father. Flo Mayweather was fighting the same way he was fighting in the amateurs, taught by his dad. Taught by his dad. He was not fighting like the Black Mamba. Black Mamba, um, Roger Mayweather and, and Flo Mayweather Sr. had two different type of style. But you could see Flo Mayweather Jr. like his dad because everything that was already built and molded, he's just sharpening it up in the professional level. The most dangerous person is Banda. He's the secret weapon. And maybe the fight won't happen because he probably knows too much of Devin Dream Haney. I'm going to give you another example. Why you think Devin Haney in the past said that he won't fight, that, that him and Josh Taylor will never fight? Why? Because remember, Ben Davidson was training Devin Dream Haney and Ben Davidson was training Josh Taylor. Remember during the whole uh, the leading up to the Lenaris fight, and then after the Lenaris fight, Devin the Dream Haney expressed that he would never fight Josh Taylor because it's not normal. But if this fight does happen, I I, I would give still the edge to the most proven fighter, the most skillful fighter, and Devin the Dream Haney. But it will still be a tough fight. It'll still be a tough fight. Boxer puncher is always an exciting fight. And let me tell you like this, folks: just because you got the skills. All the skills, because I believe that Devin Haney got the footwork, got the defense, got the jab, got the punch selections and things of that nature. He's not more powerful than Subrema Matias. He probably can't take the punches that Subrema Matias, but we've seen Subrema Matias, you know, he's he, he been wobbled before, just like Devin Haney had Dan Salsa before versus Jorge Linares. And already, uh, um, Subrema Matias has taken the L, so he, it's not like he's a perfect fighter. But um, I think it will be a wonderful fight. And I think the X factor will be Banda. It will be Banda. The most dangerous thing that Subrema Matias have is just not his fist. Is the trainer that knows Devin Haney if that fight, that unification bout ever takes place. So, um, what y'all think?